All right, here we are doing our hypothesis test for linear correlation, two variables. And the example problem we're going to look at says we wish to determine if there is positive linear correlation between two variables at a significance level of five thousandths, 0 0.005. And then we have the data set here. So we can go ahead and put in our level of significance in the spreadsheet. So we can use that to compare with the p-value later. And we can set up our hypotheses. So with the hypotheses, you're looking at the population parameter, the population correlation coefficient, rho. So if you think of r as the correlation coefficient for the sample, then rho is the correlation coefficient for the population. Um, so the null hypothesis is that it's zero, which would say there is no correlation. And the alternative is that it's significantly different from zero, which would suggest that there is correlation. Um, specifically here, they say there's a positive linear correlation. So, you know, given your data, you might be able to head in one direction or the other. If it's not obvious, you'd keep it here, like, different from zero as a two-tailed test. But since it says positive, we'd actually make that claim the alternative. And that makes it a right-tailed test which just will matter which p-value you grab at the end. Um, so you want to put your data into your spreadsheet. I'm going to copy and paste this in. Sometimes it's kind of weird about that. Paste it to match the destination format. And my formulas here um, go down about 100 rows. Um, and then the different data sets I'm putting in change. So you want to scroll down and make sure you don't have, like if you're overwriting data from a different problem, that you don't have something else left over from here. Because if the older set of data was long and you put a new set of data, you're going to have some leftover numbers here that might be included and you don't want to. So just make sure that right below where you paste it in, it's all blank. Um, you can also check the sample size. So see, I have it going down to row 100, but it's only counting up to this one where there's actually numbers put in. Uh, so you get your sample size here as the number of pairs of data, right? Not the number of numbers, but the number of pairs, number of rows, it's 34. Degrees of freedom is two less than that. The sample correlation coefficient you can find with the Corel function in Excel. Again, I have it going down a row 100, but it's only actually calculating that with the rows where there's numbers. It doesn't include the blank ones. That way I can keep those um, those equations and formulas the same and just put in different data sets and this spreadsheet will always work. Uh, of course, if you go to a data set that's more than 97 numbers, you're going to need to change this. But that shouldn't happen for this class. All right, um, and then we have our test statistic, which is going to put together the degrees of freedom and the correlation coefficient and the coefficient of determination um, according to this formula here. All right, so from the textbook. Uh, so fraction with a numerator r times square root of n minus 2, remember n minus 2 is degrees of freedom, over the square root of 1 minus r squared. And so we have r, we have n minus 2, we have r squared. So we just put those together in that formula right there. All right, and then use the t-distribution with the degrees of freedom we had there. Um, so with the absolute value, um, that's for the two-tailed version, right? You have to use positive for t-dist. So put in the positive version and use two for two tails. Um, for left-tailed, you're going to have to, you'll end up with a negative test statistic, so you just make it positive by putting a negative sign. Um, it's giving an error message now, but we don't need it, right? This is a right-tailed test, so we really just want the right-tailed one. And that just uses the test statistic and the degrees of freedom in one tail. So this two-tailed one will always work, and the left and right ones will only work when you need them. Um, but you got to know which one to grab. So uh, we've got our p-value and our correlation coefficient. We can put in the correlation coefficients 0 0.4514. Um, the p-value is the right-tailed one, 0 0.0037, right? Four, four decimal places that would round to 37. And uh, we were actually using an alpha of 0, 0, 0,05. So the p-value is less than alpha, just barely. Um, 
So we would reject the null hypothesis, right? You make the decision in the same way as you always would. If p is less than alpha, you reject. If p is greater than alpha, you fail to reject. Uh, because p is still the probability of the null being true and getting the sample data you did. So remember, a low p-value is so very unlikely that we would have the null be true, right? Because we assume that the sample data is correct. Uh, so of course, if it's unlikely, then we can reject it, and we can then support the alternative, um, which is that, uh, well, that there's a linear correlation. Now, in this case, there is a uh, positive, positive linear correlation between the variables. Um, so uh, we can now put that in as our final conclusion. There is sufficient sample evidence to support the claim um, that there's positive correlation. So pretty easy to go through and do the hypothesis test for the correlation coefficient.